I drilled a 332nd hole in this aluminum bar stock, one here and one here. That is the distance between the two pins that are in those two shoes on the diagonal. And we'll create a loop on each end. So this is the gauge. Now what I'm going to do is take a piece of brass wire, a 332, and I'm going to wrap it around this pin here and bring it back and wrap it around this pin here so that I have an eye at each end or a hook. And that'll go in those shoes and then get pinned. Now I could have used the, the brass 332nd wire that I'm using for the diagonals. But the problem is when you pull this, you wrap this around, there's likelihood of, of pulling that and bending it and shortening up the distance. What I've done is used a short piece of piano wire. Now if you had a broken drill bit that would work as well. But I've used piano wire because it's very very strong and won't bend without a lot of pressure. And I'll use, use this as a gauge to make those diagonal rods with a hoop on each end. These diagonals actually require a turnbuckle because when they were installed the turnbuckle on each one of them would be adjusted to tighten up the tension between the two cords. So these turnbuckles here which have been provided I've pre-drilled through the center for the brass wire and, the, and I will install I will install a turnbuckle on each one of these wire rods like so. Before I do that, as you just saw a moment ago, I've taken and I've annealed the end of these wires so that the brass wire is very very soft like butter. That's going to make it a lot easier to loop and bend around those eyes because the brass is very, very soft now. now you don't want to get it too annealed too far down because it can create kinks where you don't want it. But that will allow me to bend this around those, those, uh, those pins a lot easier. I've now bent made a little loop at each end. The turnbuckle is installed but it's loose and I'll set an exact distance to it so they're all exactly the same. I place the wire rod with the needle end a little past the pin and then with its needle nose I just hold it nice and tight with my fingers, needle nose and then I'll just turn it right around and give it a pinch and I get a nice little eye on the end and I'll just nip that little piece off there like so and we've got a beautiful little hook and you can always just tweak that just a bit more to try and get that on the end and then don't forget, I've forgotten twice now, to install turnbuckle. So the turnbuckle's on. So I'll put that hook back on, on that eye. And then on the on the opposite end. same side because I want the I want the hook to go around the same way and I'll just nip a little extra off there so it's a little longer on this end and then simply push push that around pinch it has a nice little hook on the end like that 
lift it off the the pin and just take so that it's it's open and we've got another perfect rod with an eye on each end. Now if you don't like it you can always put it back on and just give it another little tweak and it's good to go. And then move on to the next one. I've got all the diagonal braces now uh, assembled with the turnbuckles on them and eyes or hooks on, on the opposite end and they're ready to um, have the turnbuckles adjusted. The easiest way to make all the turnbuckles at the same distance on the end, I just take the uh, pin here and I put a piece of masking tape across here and I've decided on four feet and I use the scale you know just to mark the edge and I put a piece of masking tape across the iron the aluminum bar take the hook and I just place it over one pin and against the other end and then I just put a little dab of ACC at that point there and I just slide the eye bar sorry the, the uh, turnbuckle uh, onto that and it's exactly four feet and they're all the same so they'll actually look quite uh, respectful in terms of uh, the distance apart uh, in once they're all assembled now each one of these hooks or eyes we have to flatten them a little bit a little thinner than what they are to make sure they all fit into the shoes so what I've done is um, I think they're a little soft and delicate to use a file, so I'm using the edge of the sanding disc here, and I'm just going to I'm just going to sand it very, very lightly, uh, one on each side. I just touch it very lightly, and we have a nice flat spot here, and it's just a little thinner than what it was before should slide into each one of these shoes very nicely. I've now installed the first pair of diagonal braces. The turnbuckle should be at the lower end and remember this is the bottom. So what I've done is I've put the diagonal brace into the shoe and I put a pin through the holes and through the, the hook or the eye done that at both ends and then I reinforced it with putting a little uh, blob of ACC in the joint to help secure this and make it rigid. Next I will come along and nip that piece of brass pin off of there. I've used longer pins in here because they're easier to hold to push through and into those holes. One of the final steps are these shoes that will carry the diagonal bracing across the bottom of the bridge. Now what we're going to do is we're going to we're going to drill these holes out and then cut each of these out and then we have to fold them into a U shape with a little bit of a curve here and that will be the shoe that will attach across the top of the I-beams. We're now entering probably I consider the most difficult part of this project and that is these bottom diagonal braces. Now it's probably not that clear to see because of this close-up uh, camera that not only has its limitations but those shoes are now put across this big shoe that carried the eye bar and have to pin through the shoe through the shoe all the way through then we have the diagonal rod here that's going to go into the end of the shoe and at the other end this is where I've pre-bent an eye. 
Now that is what's going to go between the two shoes with the big shoe on top of, on top of that. So we've got to pin the shoe on the shoe with the eye bolt, eye rod going through in inside of this. This is going to be very fussy. I can see a lot of hours going in on this. So that'll be one and then the other going the other way. Now the the end ones don't require another rod coming through here so it doesn't have a loop on the underside of this. So the end ones are actually the easiest ones. Once we start going into the the center units we're going to end up as I said with the diagonal bar going in uh, inside of this with the shoe going on top of it and then a pin going through all components and then that eye bar will go across to the other side and so on. Difficult to explain, the clearer once you see it, it uh, complete.